The competitive online multiplayer landscape is in a booming place right now, from enduringly beloved titles such as Destiny 2 to the ever popular Fortnite or the annual releases of Call of Duty. This is a space filled with quality entries, however what these games have in quality they lack in novelty. And this is where Capcom's Exo Primal comes in. It has elements of a horde mode, sort of like a Vermintide type experience, while also featuring an element of PvP gameplay. The various Exo suits, which all have a very distinct feel and serve wholly unique purposes, even give that game a bit of a hero shooter flavour. But with all these unique components mashed together, there is the potential to feel overwhelmed. But worry not friends, we've got all the tips you need to be eligible for bonus existence. Look, we get it, you want to be a cyber ninja, so do your friends. You all want to run around, slashing your sword and pretending you're Grey Fox. Cool, but also you aren't dooming your team. Classes exist for more than just variety. You'll want to have a tank unit on your team when you're facing off against the opposition, or when you're dealing with more serious threats. Tanking can be pretty important. You will be able to do without a witch doctor for a number of missions, but at some point you are going to need a healer to keep everyone alive. Remember, you can switch exosuits on the fly, so if your team is lacking an important component, be flexible and swap out so you can improve your team's chances. Being reactive to your situation as opposed to trying to be a specialist can absolutely win the day in Exo Primal. On that note, a well formed team will begin the match playing an assault type unit and transition into a specialised role during later missions as they're needed. And it doesn't take long to switch exosuits, and you're given notice before a dinosaur arrives, so you do have time for reactive exosuit swapping. At the end of the day, if you're saving your ultimate, that just means you aren't building towards a second one. There are certain times where it does make sense to hold on to it, maybe you are nearing the final mission and you know you're not going to be able to get another one in time for the big battle, so it might be worth saving for that. But for the most part, you are better off letting your abilities rip. This is doubly true for your core abilities as they recharge quickly and will always be ready for the next mission, so you don't need to be precious about them. Cycle through those abilities as often as possible, as this is how you will maximise your dino killing potential. When it comes to the best support unit, we feel like the Witch Doctor is a slam dunk. Not only does this exosuit substantially boost your team's survivability with its potent healing abilities, but it also comes rocking some truly excellent mobility. Whenever you're in a pinch, you can jump away in the blink of an eye. Moreover, the Witch Doctor's primary weapon may do measly damage, but it can stun enemies, which gives opportunities for the more DPS focused units to really let loose. However, the big thing to remember about every support unit, especially the Witch Doctor, is that this class is excellent for survivability, but it will stymie your DPS. So early missions when your allies aren't as likely to take serious damage, you might want to stick with an assault unit instead. Unless you have a team that coordinates well and can use the Witch Doctor's ability to shock enemies to their advantage effectively. Which brings us to our next point. A really well balanced team is fantastic for survivability, but balance isn't necessarily the key to victory. Sure, you may kill a Carnotaurus without a member ever being downed, but if the other team manages to kill their Carnotaurus 20 seconds faster, it doesn't matter if they sustain losses in the process. Everything needs to be in the service of speed. If you feel like we're sending mixed messages here, as we just mentioned how effective playing a support character can be, understand that everything goes back to adaptability. There are scenarios where it just isn't efficient to be using a non-DPS type character. That being said, if your team is constantly getting wiped then you need a support unit so that you aren't getting slowed by constantly needing to revive members of the squad. That is the essential push-pull of the game. Another component worth considering is being more efficient between missions. When you are running to the next objective, use any abilities you may have to get there quicker. Only one member needs to get to the mission start point for the mission to begin, and there is no time to dawdle in between encounters. Modules may appear to provide a pretty minimal benefit at first, but once they are fully leveled and have started stacking complementary modules, they do make quite the difference. But since Exo Primal is a game where you're going to want to be flexible, it's important that you equip every exo suit that your team may need. At the very least, make sure that you have a fully kitted out assault, support and tank unit. We would also strongly recommend choosing different rigs for each exo suit. The cannon is a wonderful starter rig and feels very relevant throughout, however the shield can greatly improve a unit's durability and help provide some much needed protection for ranged units. You'll want to be able to swap out exo suits on the fly, so make sure that every exo suit is fitted with the best possible gear. 
As we mentioned earlier, Exoprimal is a race. One of the interesting elements is that you will on occasion catch a glimpse of your opponents. This will always occur after completing a mission, however it isn't a negligible element. If you're smart, you can use this to your advantage. One of the most useful aspects of these ghosts is it will show you where the next objective is if you're behind. Even if the Watcher has yet to advance, heading to the other team's position will help you shave off a second or so and get to the next mission quicker. Beyond that, it will give you a glimpse of the team's composition, so if you're nearing the final conflict, you can potentially try to counterpick their exosuits. While we all love your dino-destroying enthusiasm, if you aren't helping to complete the objectives, then you're a liability. If there's an area where you're supposed to be and you're elsewhere shooting raptors, then you aren't helping. Sure, it may boost your score at the end of the match, but all the other lower scoring team members, the ones who actually tried to win the match, will hate you for sabotaging them. We can't emphasize this enough. The data cube moves faster the more people who are in the target area. The marker charges quicker when more people are in the target area defending it. If there is a target area, you should be inside of it, not farming raptors half a mile away. There's some of our advice on the best ways to earn the privilege of bonus existence in Exoprimal. I've been Luke Gould, thanks for watching, and check out thegamer.com for more. Dinosaur call.